Well, good morning and welcome to the workshop. In this video, I'm going to be tweaking the Sentec to try and make it a bit more accurate. And I'm going to get started finally on machining the axle boxes for my five inch gauge locomotive. One of the things that's becoming increasingly apparent with the, the use of this mill is that the gib screws need attention. I've actually had a look and as I mentioned before, I'm missing two on the back. Uh, two are broken off, and so actually on the back, the only thing holding it in are the locks, you know, the axis locks. Um, so they need to be replaced, um, as do the ones on the y-axis. Here, uh, there's only one missing on this one, uh, but in general, they need to be tightened up. This is one of the grub screws for, I think, the x-axis on my Centec mill. And as you can see, it's about seven-eighths of an inch long. There's about an eighth of it here, which is turned down uh, to about an eighth of an inch in diameter so we need to turn uh, this which is a cup head we need to take that down flat and then turn this end to the same profile as the previous one and this one is slightly longer so we've got a lot of room here to work with so let's do that on the lathe so this is the usual setup where I've got a piece of beer can uh, around the work and I've pinched it through coming through here. So I'm just going to now turn down the edge as per standard turning operations. I'm going to uh, lock the carriage here since I'm now on the end and then I know now I can wind it in by a given amount. That's 132, it needs to be 120. So we need to go in by five and a half thou. So there's the original and there's the replacement. So I've got to make another, well, strictly speaking, I only need to make another two of these. Voila. This humidity detector thing. As you can see here, it is detecting that there is 67% humidity in here and a target of 62. And so it is switching on my dehumidifier. I've also got some groovy new safety glasses and these ones have a plus one prescription built in, which is super handy. I wanted to quickly note another thing I'd found with the mill while I was looking at the gib screws. I've been struggling with sometimes with work pieces, I'm getting this weird like, Aztec pyramid effect. So as I'm traversing around the face of a piece of work, trying to level it off, um, I'm noticing that the cuts at the end aren't cutting as deep as the cuts at the start. So what's happening is somehow the surface of that cutter is being moved upwards. So I thought maybe it's the, uh, the end mill, but of course the way the end mills are, you know, um, geometrically, uh, arranged, they should be trying to unthread themselves rather than thread themselves in, and it's all locked up tight, so it can't be that. Um, the collet is fine, the drawbar's okay, so it was really down to whatever this locking mechanism was. Something was allowing the the quill to push upwards, and this wouldn't be a problem with the Mark II vertical head or the Mark I vertical head, because they didn't have a quill, they just had the fine feed. But I was trying to work out which permutation of levers and handles I needed to do. So first I tried um, disengaging the fine feed and just locking the quill. And then I could actually move it with one finger. With this locked tight as it could, I could just push this with a finger and it would move up and down. Um, so that clearly wasn't it. And I thought, okay, right, what I'll do is I'll lock the fine feed. I will tr like try and pull the, the quill handle towards me to push the spindle up to get rid of any backlash that's in the fine, th the fine feed gearing. Um, and then lock it, and that, that helped. But actually, um, what I found was, inside here is the lock for the quill, or the, the spindle, I guess, um, and it's a bolt that goes through, and there's one curved surface which just bears against the side of this. And if you put your finger in that hole, uh, you, can, you can feel the inside of the quill. And what was happening is this was bottoming out. This, this little handle here is the quill lock, and it was, this was bottoming out before it was able to fully compress onto the spindle. So, like I said, if I could just have this fully locked and just use my finger and it would move up and down. So I've added in a, a fairly thick zinc-plated steel washer in there, which I know isn't period, but whatever. 
um, and it seems to have made a great difference. You know, I can't, with, with some fair effort, I can't move this at all. If anything, it's shaking the mill, which is uh, obviously another issue to deal with, but uh, I think it has resolved my problem. Look, put my finger on the surface I've cut here, um, there is almost nothing uh, between those cuts, and I think if there is anything, it might be a little burr or something. Um, yes, I am wearing gloves. Uh, my hands are well away from the milling, and I have been doing this for literally days, and my hands have become filthy every time, so I'm gloved up just for today. To give you an example of what I mean, this is the finish of a part I made without the fix on the quill lock, and it's generally flat, but you can see there are lots of different facets on this one, you know, over in this corner here. Just in general, it's it's uh, it's not it's not great. And then compare that to a piece I just made um, with a fairly heavy cut, so the surface finish isn't great, um, but that is completely uh, one one size, one face, one layer of flatness. Um, this side, there was a scuff in that corner there, but exactly the same thing. Uh, if you forget the, the surface finish marks, it is perfectly flat. So uh, that has definitely, definitely helped. Well, it's been mere seconds for you, but unfortunately days for me to get these all squared up. I still haven't machined the hole for the keep, nor have I machined the keeps, which will be coming out of this. Um, that's because I've spent a very long time sitting in front of the milling machine making cast iron dust, and I kind of wanted to do something else. <laughs> so I'm going to call time on the axle boxes just for now. I'm quite pleased with how they've come out. I'm trying to get the most accuracy I can out of the milling machine. And so you can see here this, this DTI or this uh, finger indicator. And I'm using that to check squareness and to check the, um, the heights across there. And in general, they're within a few thou of every dimension. And I'm quite pleased with that, uh, but it's not quite perfect yet. So uh, I still got a lot of work to do, but in general, I'm, I'm really pleased with how this is, uh, this is turning out. Generally, my workshop isn't this messy. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of different things. You can see the grub screws from earlier on. I've got some threaded rod and got some calipers and things. And I keep losing things, which is not great because I think the workshop's fairly well organized. Just the problem I have is just I just absentmindedly put something down and then go off to do something else. But I think I have found the pro tip for this is as soon as I've realized I've lost something that I can't find, I say to myself, I'm just gonna clean up. And then that allows me to walk around the workshop and pick things up and put them away. And as I'm doing that, I inevitably find the thing I want. If I just go straight to try and find the thing I want, uh, and I can't find it within a few minutes, I obviously get frustrated. Uh, but this way, I'm thinking to myself, no, 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 I'm cleaning. That's totally fine. And then it appears.